Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, glad to introduce uh, Mr. Professor Sinisha Srbilic from the University of Zagreb and his group uh, who are today with us uh, and giving the Geppetto talk. Uh, you may have read uh, about uh, this you know, consumer approach to programming from the talk abstract. Uh, we will have a nice demo today, so you know, like the talk is a bit on the longish side. I'm going to shorten my introduction and let them uh, take the podium now. So please welcome them to Google. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sinisha Srblic, and I will be giving a short introduction to this presentation that will explain uh, the motivation for our research. And later on, uh, uh, here with me are Martin, uh, Miro, and Clemo. And all of us are coming from University of Zagreb, and it's in south part of Europe. Uh, and we are from School of Electrical Engineering and Computing. Uh, the research that will be presented today is supported by our uh, Croatian Ministry of Science, and as well through Google Research Award program through these two projects. Uh, here, I want to especially thank to our Ministry of Science that support these 10 brilliant uh, young researchers. These are one of the best students in our school and give me a chance to be their supervisor and help them through their PhD program. So let me, uh, at the beginning, explain what motiva motivate us you know, to do this research. And later on, Clemo and, and Marin will more deeply explain the results of our work. As we know, the number of job openings in application development exceeds the number of professional programmers. And although the number of uh, uh, graduates uh, in computer science uh, increase, is increasing worldwide, it is not enough to satisfy the need of, for, of industry. And what will future bring, think about all of these sophisticated uh, devices that need to be customized and future applications that need to be personalized. And imagination will be the only limit for you know, consumers to personalize and uh, customize their devices and applications. This opens the question, who will develop all of these applications? Do we, need, do we have enough professional programmers nowadays? No, and even in future it will be worse. You know, think about all of you know, these uh, applications which will be dynamic in nature and probably will happen that for all of this application we will need one professional programmer for each consumer. So this open, you know, the question uh, how can be this done? The only way how can be this done is that each consumer, you know, starts doing and programming their open application. So can we do it or what is now that is happening is that consumers are educated and they are ed educated through formal schooling system. That's a one way how can be this be done. The another way is that uh, <coughs> we should, you know, provide them appropriate tool uh, which are appropriate for their knowledge, skill, and habits. And what is our point here in this presentation is that uh, the average consumer. The average consumer uh, uh, knowledge and uh, uh, and uh, uh, state of the art of uh, technology reached the point where it's uh, possible to develop tool which is appropriate and which consumers can use it. Okay. So in next slides, I will explain very shortly uh, where the consumers uh, stands with respect to the technology. As we know that. Consumer knowledge and skills is increasing nowadays, and this is not only because there are, you know, are, uh, uh, educated through formal school system, but they are informally educated by exchanging the experience with other consumers. And at the same time, the complexity of programming is decreasing because uh, of higher level abstractions that enables rapid uh, application development. As we know that introduction of graphical user interfaces in uh, operating systems led to uh, widespread use of personal, 
person, uh, personal computers, actually PCs, becomes consumer electronics. But on another side, although the, now the scripting language seems to be the programming languages of 21st centuries, and we can agree that they are much easier to use than system languages, but they are not still you know, simple enough to be used by, com by consumers. What we see as solutions is our software gadgets. Uh, as we know that software gadgets become uh, more popular each and every day, and since consumers are familiar with the uh, software gadgets, we uh, have an idea to use this software gadget as a basic, semantic, intuitive blocks for uh, application development. And with this in the mind, we uh, designed Gepetto, a consumer programming tool. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, since the consumer approach to programming should not be different that, than using any other device they use or application nowadays, which means that, in other words, it should require minimal training and based on, it should be based on trial and error experimentation. And, yeah, and to fill, uh, fulfill these uh, expectations, uh, consumer expectations, we, uh, and to encourage uh, consumers to start programming, we develop this uh, 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 graphical user uh, level methodology which uses uh, software gadgets as build, basic building blocks for uh, application development. So, through the rest of the presentation, uh, Martin and Claymo will, uh, pres uh, will, ex will present or explain what will be the basic programming elements based on which you know the application will be developed, how the programming process for consumers will look like, and in the end, we will show how the consumers will develop applications. Uh, since all of us are programmers, then we will compare that programming process, consumer programming process, with the classical programming process. And we will show how, instead of building applications out of uh, objects, the consumers will build applications out of, out of uh, software, gadget, software gadgets. Uh, Martin, please continue the presentation. Thanks, Professor. Hi, everyone. My name is Marin. Um, in the next few slides, uh, we will describe programming elements that are used in Geppetto. And we will compare those programming elements with programming elements in general purpose languages um, in order to show that Geppetto is equally powerful uh, as any other programming tool. So uh, while general purpose languages use objects as basic building components. Applications are built out of objects. In Geppetto, we use software gadgets as basic building blocks. So uh, those objects in general purpose languages, they provide methods. For example, object quote has a method get next quote. On the other hand, on the gadget, methods are presented with the action elements on the gadget. Furthermore, uh, method invocation is it's equal to, to button click on the gadget. Um, those methods in general purpose languages, they have input and output parameters. For example, Method get next quote has a parameter author. On the other hand, on the gadget, there's an input area that's used for entering author's name. So we can say that input output parameters on the API level are equal to input and output elements on the gadget. Um, in addition, uh, passing those parameters when the method is invoked, it's equal to filling out the input elements on the gadget. Well, in general purpose languages, those objects, they have to communicate sometimes with each other by uh, calling methods and exchanging data through variables. In this simple example, we get the quote from one object, and then we pass that quote to another object. That data exchange uh, on the GUI level is done by 
selecting text on one gadget, copying text from that gadget, and paste text to another gadget. So we can say that data exchange between objects on the API level, it's equal to copy-paste action on the GUI level. To summarize, we compare all the basic elements in general purpose languages with those in Geppetto, and we can see that uh, all of those that can be found in general purpose languages are also present in Geppetto, and that makes it equally powerful for ap application composing. In the, in the second part of the presentation, we will, we will show the programming process in Geppetto in order to show how entertaining and lightweight that process is, we will compare it with classic programming process. So uh, in classic programming process, these are like ordinary first steps you do in order to find the right components and to compose them into a new application. So basically, y you search for libraries, you carefully examine the APIs, and then you just shape complex process. In consumer programming, in our tool, Geppetto, a uh, consumer needs to find the appropriate gadgets and to perform GUI level actions in order to create a new application. In this example, consumer is using two independent gadgets, driving directions gadget and weather gadget, and he's creating an application that will provide driving direction from source to destination and uh, weather forecast at the destination point. Um, and now we go back to classic programming process. So once the application has been designed, the next step includes process of coding. And once you're done with that, you probably get something like this. To understand the coded logic, the programmer needs to be familiar with both syntax and semantics of the given programming language. And sometimes it, it takes for a while to understand the behavior. So. Um, instead, writing statements of code in consumer programming, consumer is using Geppetto context-sensitive menu to define GUI level actions. In the beginning, consumer is selecting the button that will start the execution. So I, I want my program, my application, to be executed when this button GUI is clicked. So that, that's the reason why I choose when clicked. I use that same menu to define all the other actions, for example, type Los Angeles, and also actions type type Irvine. So we, we wanted our presentation to be entertaining and fun, so we have a little demo. My colleague Clemo will show how this process actually looks like in our tool, and then we, we'll keep on with the presentation. So please, Clemo. Okay, thank you, Marin. Hello, everybody. My name is Klemo, and I will show you a couple of demos during this presentation. So first, I will switch from PowerPoint to web browser, and now we're live on iGoogle. You're all familiar with iGoogle, Google's gadget container page. So to start with demo, first, I will select the button that will start the application execution, and now I will add the rest of actions that constitute consumer application. So first action, we'll type in source location. Okay. Second action, we'll type in destination location. Let's say Irvine. And third action will trigger map rendering on driving directions gadget. So all other actions are needed to get weather information at destination. So we'll enter settings. We'll type in the same destination location. And start searching. OK, now we're done with this little application. When I click Go, we see that Geppetto executes. Our application driving directions are displayed from source to destination, and weather is displayed for destination Irvine. So Marin will continue with presentation now. So that was just an application that could compute directions from LA to Irvine. Was yeah. it? No, parameterized in any form. Yeah, I'll, in later demo, I will show how we can parameterize that. OK, please, Marin. OK, thanks. Once again, we go back to classic programming process. So once the code is written, 
The next step includes analyzing the structure of the code and correcting the behavior before the, the code is saved into a text file. So we, what we want to say here is that programmer needs to use text editor for program representation and editing. And if he wants to make any changes in the code, he needs to manipulate with files. On the other hand, while consumer is using Geppetto menu to define GUI level actions, those actions are recorded and stored into a list. So uh, when I define the action that will type Irvine, a new action is created and it's stored at the, at the end of the list. Those actions, they can be stored from top to bottom. In this case, time goes from top to bottom and the action that types Los Angeles, it's above the action that types Servine, and this means that it needs to be executed before. The other approach would be to store those actions one just right after another. In this case, time goes from left to right, and the action that types Los Angeles is left to the action that types Servine, and this means that it needs to be executed before. So keeping this in mind, we can place those actions in a two-dimensional grid, and what we get is consumer uh, representation program, consumer program representation in Geppetto. And we would like to emphasize that all those time relations are kept. So all the uh, consumer programming uh, by using Geppetto menu provides, pro produces uh, only single sequ sequence of actions. Our tool enables consumers to rearrange those actions in, in any possible form within the grid. Simple uh, relation of time precedence just uh, described enables consumers to create diverse forms which can define even sophisticated order of execution. In this example, the presented form synchronizes the first stream of actions, those three, with other two streams that are executed in parallel, which uh, all of you as experienced programmers uh, should recognize as fork programming structures. So this is an important moment and we would like to point out that Geppetto provides consumers not just ability to program, but also ability to create parallel programs. Now we have a demo again. Clamo will show how consumer program representation and Parallel programming works in Geppetto, please. Okay, again, I will switch to web browser. So editor button on Geppetto gadget takes us to Geppetto program editor. We'll wait for editor to load. Okay, I'll select Geppetto program. I resize this a little. Okay, so this is Geppetto program for our previous demo. Uh, in current version of our tool, we will simplify textual representation for GUI actions. So all actions here are initially executed sequentially, but as Marin has shown, they can be reorganized in grid. So for instance, I will move actions for weather gadget in column two and in column three. Just as in presentation, I will do the same with this one. Okay, now when I click close, Geppetto reloads with new program, and when I click go, we see that Geppetto executes this program a little bit faster because we introduced parallel actions in program. Okay. Marian will continue with presentation. Thanks. And the final step, uh, once in classic programming, once, uh, once you remove all the bugs and once the code is compiled, the new logic, the new application needs to be deployed somewhere on appropriate place so everyone can use its functionalities. On the other hand, in Geppetto, a new application is encapsulated into, into a new gadget. To use that gadget, consumer needs to define user interface for that gadget. To simplify the whole process, consumer is reusing the elements that are present, present and available on the gadgets that are used as basic components. And Clamo will, will show how that process uh, works on the fly in Geppetto, how new gadget is how simply new gadget is created. Please, Clamo. 
Okay, thank you, Marin. So now I'll demonstrate the entire process of creating a new gadget in six simple steps presented on the slide. So in first step, we will create the user interface for our gadget. In second step, we will define the start button. That's the button that will start the application. Three, we will map user-defined inputs from Geppetto gadgets to all other gadgets we are using. In fourth step, we will define the application logic. In fifth step, we will take those outputs from gadgets we are using back to Geppetto gadget. And finally, in step six, we can try that application. So again, let's go to iGoogle. So we have driving directions gadget and world weather gadget. So in first step, we will create user interface. I will take those two locations. So I select add, and these text boxes appear on Geppetto gadget. I will also take this button, and in step two, I will select this button as a start button. And now we can create our application. First, we will take user-defined inputs from Geppetto gadget to driving directions gadget. We'll do the same with destination. OK. Now for world weather gadget. First, we'll enter settings. And we'll take the same destination location here. OK. Now we're done with input mapping. So in step four, we will define the application logic. In this demo, this is simple. We just have to trigger map rendering and start searching on world weather gadget. Since all output elements are on driving directions gadget and world weather gadget, we will skip step five for now that involves output mapping. And we can try this application. I will enter. Same destination. And when I click go, Japet executes our newly created program, but that program is now encapsulated into this gadget. OK. I will go back to presentation. So now I will create a little bit more complex application in Geppetto. In this demo, we will create an application for browsing popular books divided into different categories, but book details will be displayed with localized content. Our application will have book category, target language, and target currency as inputs, and book cover, book title, book syllabus in target language, and book price in target currency as outputs. Book browser application can be built using three objects, bestseller subjects for finding popular books in selected category, and since we want book details displayed for non-US customers, we need translate object for text translation and currency converter object. This is how our application my books might look like. First, we select category on bestsellers gadget in which books will be retrieved, and best gadgets, bestsellers gadget returns titles, covers, syllabuses, and prices. Next, we send syllabus along with source language and target language to translate object, and translate object translates book syllabus to target language and returns it to our My Books application. Finally, we'll do the same with price. We invoke convert method of currency converter object. We send price with source currency a target currency, and currency converter converts book price from source currency to target currency. OK, and this is something you'll recognize. You have to actually write code to implement this kind of an application. And now let's build similar application with Geppetto. I'll switch to web browser, select different tab. So building an application in Geppetto is simple as creating a new gadget. We just have to follow the previously defined six steps. For this demo, we prepared bestsellers gadget with popular books, Google Translate gadget for text translation, and simple currency converter. So in first step, we will create a user interface for our new application. For inputs, we need a book category. We'll take this button. We need target language and target currency. For outputs, we will take book title, book cover. We'll take this book price. And here we have book syllabus, so we'll take it. OK, so now we're done with templating our user interface for application. So in second step, I will select a button that will start the application execution. And in third step, I will map user-defined inputs from Geppetto gadgets to all other gadgets we are using. So we'll select category on bestsellers gadget. We'll select target language on Google Translate gadget. And we'll select target currency on simple currency converter gadget. Okay. In step four, I will define the application logic for this demo. 
So first, we will read our new books in new category. And next, we will take this syllabus, originally displayed in English, to Google Translate gadget, and we'll translate it here to already selected target language. We'll do the same with price. We select price and to currency converter, and we'll convert it to already selected target currency. So now we're done with our application logic, and in step five, we will take new outputs from these gadgets. We are using back to the Peto gadget. So we need new book title. We also need new book cover. We'll take now converted book price from here to here, and we'll take the translated syllabus from Google Translate gadget to our Geppetto gadget. So now we're done with our application. We can try it. I will select category. I will select target language and target currency. And when I click go, we see that Geppetto executes our application. New book details are displayed here, but book price is displayed in Croatian currency, Kuna, and book syllabus is translated to Croatian language. So we're done with our demo. Now I will invite professor to conclude this presentation. Okay. Thank you, Clemo, very much. Let's say, uh, to conclude this presentation, let me stress out the basic characteristic of our Geppetto tool. It uh, implements trial and error consumer approach to programming. It uses gadgets as consumer semantic intuitive building blocks. It provides uh, graphical user level programming techniques. It, it uses uh, graphical user programming actions independent of gadget semantics. And uh, we introduce a uh, two-dimensional two time grid for programming representation and editing. And at the end, it, uh, it in, uh, encapsulated the consumer program into the new gadget. What we are doing nowadays is that we want to, you know, that representation in two-dimensional grid table, we want to be visualized. Uh, we are working on a set of gadgets that will be used for common um, uh, functions in a, uh, during application development, some common uh, uh, gadget uh, which are we needed to know for uh, very uh, frequently used uh, task when we are doing you know the application. Uh, we are working on a, how to manage uh, instances of the gadgets, which is very important. Then working on some consumer debugging tool, which will enable to maybe to be this process you know more friendly and to enable actually you know, to check what's going on with the application during the execution. We want to make it be, be, be portable you know, on different kind of uh, browser and gadget containers. And once we will have building, you know, possibility to build a gadget out of gadgets which is actually you know, composed from other gadgets, then we will probably run into the problem of scalability. So we are working on to make that a large, to be a large scalable system. So at the end, you are all welcome to visit our page and to try to, uh, programming with our tool. And all you know, comments and any kind of uh, feedback are welcome. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. And if you have any question, we will be glad to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you.